The Strangers Pray at Night, uh, which is a sequel to the first Strangers film that came out in 2008, uh, starring Liv Tyler. Uh, and did you see the first Strangers film? I saw uh, bits and pieces of it and never saw it completely to the end. Mm, okay. Um, and this one is, so it's a 10-year sequel. Um, they, I mean, they, they really trying to, you know, I guess they thought that Strangers audience was so big that they can cash in again on it. Um, and this one, they coming back, um, and it's basic, still basic setup from like the first one, um, you know, killers stalk a family, you know, kind of still that basic setup because, in this film, it all deals with this family, um, who's going to a trailer park, um, and, you know, kind of have like a little bit of a vacation before they send their daughter off to boarding school, um, because the daughter did something like it's, it's kind of vague, um, as to, as to what she did, like she messed up and did something with her friends and like, then, you know, then they're like, okay, Hey, this is the last straw. So we're going to send you off, ship you off to boarding school. And then of course, you know, she's mad about it. Um, you know, she's typical t uh, bitchy teenage girl, you know, smoking, you know, I hate you, mom, you know, you guys don't want me around. Fuck you. You know, typical cunty teenager. Um, yeah, also known as uh white kids, apparently. Yeah, apparently, you know, <laughs> I mean, apparently, yeah, that's it. You know, she and she's outside, you know, smoking. I don't know about you, but you must not have been in an Irish home. That shit would not have been tolerated. Yeah, because they just, I mean, yeah, they just put up with it. You know, they, they see her smoking, but, you know, they just kind of deal with it. They don't have, a, you know. What? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the mom sees her smoking and then she comes outside and smokes with her and stuff like that. So, I mean, they just, yeah, I was like. I mean, when, shouldn't you chastise the girl for smoking? Right. You know what I mean? She's yeah. only, she's only like a she's teenager. underage. <laughs> she's only like a teenager. You know what I mean? But okay, whatever. You know, yeah. So she's typical bitchy, cunty teenager. Um, and the mom is played, but the only really big recognizable person in this movie is Christina Hendricks. You know, people know her from you know Mad Men and things like that. Um, right. And she's the most recognizable person in this movie. Um, and then you have you know, so it's you know, the mom, the husband, the brother. The brother I thought was kind of cool. Like he kind of seem like a like a normal kind of teenage kid um you know like he's just kind of dealing with the shit like you know he's just trying to like he kind of resents the sister a little bit because the sister is just like you know hey mom mom and dad are going broke because you know you fucked up and they got to send you to boarding school and everything like that so he's kind of just over the whole situation um but like i said so they you know go to the vacation uh, this this trailer park um and one thing i can give the movie credit for is the movie starts off quick because the movie's not that long. The movie's only like an hour and 25 minutes. So, still, you know, they get into the stuff pretty quickly. Um, the thing is, is that when they finally get into the stuff, it's just these white people are dumb as fuck in this movie. Um, because a lot of stuff they do is like, why would you do that? And it, it completely is just something that just takes you out of the whole movie. Uh, because, for instance, them um, going to, the, to this trailer park, like the the kids discover a dead body, um, and then they say, "Oh, hey," let, and then they go and tell their parents, and then the the dude says, "Well, hey, let's go see what's a, what's it all about." Why? Why do you have to see what the dead body is? Like, you know, it's a dead body. What the fuck are you right. gonna do? You not see? I can it. see that from here. Yeah, I mean, you not CSI. Like, what are you gonna do? Gather evidence? <laughs> like, I mean, like, what can you do? <laughs> like, you, like, why do you have to investigate the scene? And then, like, there's a scene where. The the father and the, uh, the the husband and the uh, the son, they go um, looking for the daughter. You know, and they jump in the car, and they and this is after they know that somebody is stalking them. Like they've already seen the killers. Like they've seen the dude with the potato sack on his face, and you know all this type of stuff. They so they know somebody's out there, some weird person out there stalking them with a giant axe. But yet they jump in the car and they start screaming out the window for the daughter's name. It's like. Why the fuck would you do that? Like, you know, somebody's stalking you. Why would you give up your position and scream and yell out loud like that? Also, if you're going to take the car out at that point, um, no offense, she's on her own. Go get help. You know, well, I, I mean, that is your daughter, though. I mean, you know, that no, is no, I know, no. Like, realistically, like one of the adults should have taken the car and then gone and gone, got help. Right. Where everyone holds the fort. 
while the other adult with the kid holds the fort. Like lock up like the trailer and everything? Yes. Mm. Okay. Like, or if they all can get into the car at the time, leave immediately. Yeah. I mean, because, cause, but the thing is, like, why would you, like, you've given up your position. Like, why would you? Yeah, s- don't scream outside. Like, that, that's a good way of getting yourself killed. You know, and, and like, so I thought that that was just, they do dumb things like that. And then also the killers in this movie, um, you know, like they all like to listen to like, you know, 80s kind of pop music. They like to put on, like, before they kill you, they like, they like to put on a good soundtrack before they kill you. You know what I mean? Like they put on the 80s pop music and all that type of shit like that. Um, and then you, you got a guy and the two girls, you know, with like the, the uh, doll mask and all that type of stuff like that. Um, and the killers in the movie, they appear to be psychic because a lot of times they'll appear or they'll be somewhere before the, 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 the people will even be there. For instance, this is a scene in the movie where a girl, she runs into a trailer. And this is a, I don't know how big this trailer park is, this trailer park area, but she'll run into, like, there's all these different random trailers. And she'll run into one trailer, and um, and then, like, she'll hear a noise. First of all, this is also really stupid. Like, again, she knows people are chasing her. And she hears a noise. She goes, hello. Why the fuck would you say hello when you hear a noise and go look to see what the noise is, you already know is, yeah. somebody's there after you. And so that's dumb. But then when she yeah. hears, it's like the uh, the jack in the box thing. And then once the jack in the box finishes, the killer pops out. It's like, how did first of all, how did the killer even know that girl was there? She's waiting under the covers. It's like, how did the killer even know that girl was going to be at that particular trailer? Right. Um, and they they do see the scenes where they do show some scenes where the killers are stalking them, and you see them watching them and everything like that. Um, but it's like, but some of this instance, it's like, how do they know that they were there in that particular place? Um, and then I think, you know, when the action does kind of kick off, like when their family actually kind of does start fighting back, that is kind of entertaining and is enjoyable. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, this is kind of cool. Like when they actually, you know, kind of start to fight back and they start, stop being really stupid. I was like, okay, this is, this is not bad. But then some of the action in it is like some of these killers, like these are these killers are normal people. They're not, you know, supernatural. They're not Michael Myers or Jason. Like those right. people are regular. But then sometimes they'll have damage that's inflicted upon them that goes like, how the hell did you survive that? Right. Or if you didn't immediately die, how did you not bleed out and are unco- not unconscious somewhere? Yeah. Like there's a scene where a character takes a direct shotgun blast. To like like a direct shotgun blast, and they're still talking, like like there's no way that th- that would happen. And there's and and there's one scene was you know like a big explosion happens, but the person like doesn't die automatically. It's like yeah, that's stupid. Like that's that's Unless just they ridiculous. got a bulletproof vest on. You know, it's just like that. That's just and even then, so. even then, that doesn't stop the the breaking of ribs from the kinetic blast, especially yeah. if it's point blank. Yeah, that 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 it may stop the bullets, but it's a buckshot, assumably, or another shotgun that you're going to get broken ribs and internal bleeding. Yeah. I mean, it's just like like a lot of that stuff is just ridiculous. I was like, this this is just really dumb. And then, you know, and and you can also kind of understand like how the killers because sometimes, you know, the killers are stalking them because they like to, you know, they have to play with their food before they eat it. You know what I mean? They have sure. plenty, they have plenty of chances to kill a lot of these people. They don't do it. Um but it doesn't help like the girl is always constantly crying and, and like sobbing. Like, of course, I'm, they're able to kind of find where a lot of them are because she keeps fucking crying loud. It's like, listen, I understand you're, tra- you're traumatized a little bit, but damn, I mean, come on, pull yourself together a little bit. I how people are able to find it so quick is you keep goddamn crying all the fucking time. You know, so I mean, this movie, the, the, the saving grace of it is it's short and. I mean, it's it's nothing. It's a typical horror movie type thing, um, and they even kind of rip from other horror movies, you know, that you've seen. Like, t- like the ending is very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know what I mean? Like, once you see the ending, you you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's very very much that. Um, but and a lot of people in the movie, acting wise, I mean, the killers they don't really have much dialogue. Like, they don't really speak at all like this one girl oh, that could have been one of the saving graces no nah, they don't speak at all like this they get a couple of lines you don't even see their faces you only see one of their faces other people you don't even see their faces. that was probably one of my my problems with the first strangers movie was that they didn't talk enough no they they did talk but it was very brief and 
it didn't really matter like in the grand in the grand scheme of things in the in the dialogue and the you didn't get much information from it and so it kind of it felt very random and it, they even admit that it's like oh yeah we just kind of felt like we're going to kill you guys yeah and uh to me that's not interesting at all yeah I mean, the, I mean, these like this isn't this isn't no hills have no eyes where it's you're in their territory, and they're, they're just psychopaths, right? And and they're irradiated, and they're that's messed up their brains. Right. Uh, this also the night. This is in the 1970s. We can just get away with a quick slasher flick. You got to have something more. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it like sometimes you can if it has personality, like. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what uh, I'm saying. Like dialogue, dialogue, and just a charismatic villain can villains or villainess can really save a mediocre movie. Yeah, and like the killers, they don't have any really discernible identity or personality. Really, um, they're really not even really. I mean, some some scenes that show is kind of creepy. Like when the first killer kind of shows up knocking on the door, and their face is covered in darkness. That does kind of look kind of creepy. Um, mm-hmm. The family itself. I mean, a lot of them. Their basic, you know, movie family, and then you know, like I said, bitchy teenage daughter, and then you know, the mother and the father, and all that type of stuff. Like, there's nothing really that interesting about them. The material there, it's, it's not great material. You know what I mean? It's nothing to chew on there for the actors. So they're just kind of just there saying lines. Um, but yeah, but this is a thumbs down for me. I mean, you could you could just probably stay at home. Maybe you'll catch it on FX or something like that. Watch it there because it's Red Box. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend money on it. I don't spend. Yeah, don't, all right. I don't spend money. Just watch it on TV. So yeah, thumbs down for me. Hello, thanks for checking out our content. If you liked it, let us know. And if you didn't, let us know that as well. If you want to see more content, we post every Saturday on SoundCloud and YouTube at The Afternoon Tune. You can also find us through various social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, all one word at The Afternoon Tune. And if you don't deal with any of that social media stuff, you can also find us through our email at TheAfternoonTune at gmail.com. And don't forget to always stay tuned.